Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shijun Wang. Uh, in today's video, I am going to uh, teach you how to play the second movement of the Haydn Sonata in E flat major, the last piano sonata written by Haydn. The second movement here really is a very unique example of how the classical composers uses the technique of rhetoric instead of just beautiful singing. You see, usually um, when we have singing, we don't have so many repetitions. Right, this is really not the typical kind of uh, singing line that we talked about in Mozart sonata or in actually most of the uh, Beethoven sonata. This is more or less like a speech, more or less like a talking to you. Um, and here I have to quote uh, Vladimir Horowitz. Um, he actually, uh, one of the most important musical figure in my life is Mr. Dan Wen Wei, who teaches now in uh, Central Conservatory in China. Uh, but he spent a good 20 years uh, studying at Juilliard with uh, Mr. Cannon uh, at Juilliard. Um, and then he kind of freelanced in New York City um, for a, a long time before he went back. He was actually selected by Horowitz uh, as one of his last pupils. Um, and he told this to Mr. Wei. And of course, during my lessons with Mr. Wei, every time he, he mentions, oh, Horowitz once told me, my my ears will grow like an antenna. I want to, of course, not miss anything, and I want to really memorize <laughs> everything. Um, and he mentioned once that Horowitz said, uh, the good pianists, when they play, they can make the piano sing, but the best ones can make the piano sing. Week. Um, so, so I guess this is a terrific uh, example of that uh, use of rhetoric, the use of speech-like uh, figuration. Um, first of all, um, the very opening that motive repeated, I don't know, five times, right? It's really not typical long term the phrased singing, but see, we start with E and went to F. The next time we see the same motive, uh, a fifth above from B. Now, again, but more frequent. This is really like when you're making a point, you say it five times. Every time you're going to speak with a little bit different tone, with a little bit different attitude, so that it's not just a repetitive. Please pass me the water, please pass me the water, please pass me the water. You say it differently. Could you please pass me the water? Uh, you know, every time maybe in this case a little stronger. So we have to really feel that subtleness of, of the changing of attitude. And one thing really can uh, help us is from measure three, we see this eighth note rest underneath the main melody. Off, off. If we don't have that, it sounds very calm it sounds very normal but since we have that off moment and i'm doing this with both my hands and my pedal it adds great intensity and here after we've climbed to the mountain to the, the mountain top and here we go down and please don't play this like a well-behaved student. All seven exactly the same. No one would speak 
in this way. However, right? Are they even? They're not absolutely not even. Yum, bum, 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 bum. But that's natural, right? I guess anything human will not be exactly the same. Okay. Um, the second time uh, is very similar, the repetition of the same motive. And here, and we see that changing of mood. Very polite. And here, very sincere. Okay. And we land here on major 9 into unknown. This is uh, diminish, right? So this is quite comfortable. And I always thought this is so ethical, right? You, you start so righteously, but here you start to doubt. Explodes. still insist in going to A sharp now this melody is stating in the left hand here comes the most uh, dramatic moment. Body. After a long while, you hear the answer. Right? So, really, if you play this musically, the timing has to be adopted into speech like ways. Um, Measure 19, and we've, I've talked about this, the register in Haydn's keyboard, um, the tone is not evenly tuned, where the, the, I guess the technology, where the, the, the industry of string making wasn't, of course, as advanced as it is today in the modern Steinway. Uh, you can really tell if you play a top note, a low note, and a middle note, it's from the same piano. But back then, the low register, the sound really uh, is not very pure. So it actually has the zzz sound. So and, and Haydn took very good use of that, right? When he wants to do something intense uh, and mysterious and sometimes evil, he gives you this low register. So this should bring a tremendous amount of tension. I would focus on the left hand even more. And here... Right? All of these uh, 16th notes rest, they are pickups. Almost like a chamber music, a string quartet. And these, these are kind of like string instruments sliding, yeah, from one octave to another. Um, we encounter a very practical problem here. The first D to D is an octave, and the note is on a quarter note. Second one, D to C, it's a seventh, right? Not quite an octave, but you know, with similar number of notes in between, uh, only two less, but it's a eighth note. So if we start right this, we would have to play this first one much slower. And this faster. So I choose to start this sliding thing a little bit later so that they can 
somehow roughly keep a same tempo while uh, having the correct counting. So, but here right away. Up for a question and answer. Okay, left hand, right hand, Again, we are moved to the very low uh, register. Very intense. Sevens. Parallel sevens. Yeah, so this. So it adds a great amount of uncertainty. And finally, it resolves. It settles. So the timing in this is very, very important. One cannot just count uh, very strictly, like what we're told we're supposed to do, uh, but speak. Uh, try to probably make up some words and see what's the natural rhythm for your tongue and, and use that to help your fingers to know uh, where to place the notes again anything mechanic that's okay you can have a metronome metronome itself is mechanic but anything with human with with different feelings uh, we cannot produce anything that is absolutely even uh, that's typewriting okay so i hope this inspires you uh, on thinking outside of, of the box a little bit um, and think about this as it's a rhetoric uh, uh, movement um, this is how we speak and, and when we repeat the same sentence five times uh, a good actor will say each time slightly different and with of course, with the pronunciation, uh, that's if we translate into music, that's the tone, but more with timing. Okay, see, even naturally when I'm saying this, I slow down a little bit, right? So I say with timing, with timing, with timing, right? So the last time, of course, I'm being emphasizing this uh, very strongly, we should apply that into this Haydn sonata and into any other piece that fits the same uh, catalog i hope you like this video um, next week i'm going to continue uh, the uh, journey of the last movement which will conclude my series of the classical sonatas um, i think the next thing i'm going to teach would be chopin scherzo number two followed by all the ballads uh, i will teach from ballad number one number four and hopefully by then i i will be fully prepared to uh, teach ballad number three and two stay tuned see you next week